My name is Ty French, and these are my rants. Welcome to Ty Rants. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Ty Rants. My name is Ty French, and these are my rants. Happy, happy Wednesday. We made it through another week, and woo, I'm feeling the pressure for today's rant because I don't know. I don't know. The word on the street is, is that last week's rant about the secret life of my missing tooth was just one of the best podcast episodes, not only of Ty Rants, but that has ever graced the ears of the constituents of this country, of of the humans on this planet. And um, I'm honored that I've been awarded that honor. Um, I'm glad that probably the worst thing that's ever happened to me and the lowest of low in my entire life has been received in such warm regard to the tyrants in the community beyond. I'm so glad that when something bad happens to me, it can be planted and grown into a beautiful story for my tyrants. That when something absolutely horrendous happens in my life, that you guys get a gorgeous story from the Rat King on a Wednesday morning. So you know what? Out of every bad thing that happens to me, I just know, I just know There is a little elf somewhere in my brain saying, yes, content for the podcast. Score, story time. Yeah, yeah, more views, score, more downloads. This is our big break. So um, unfortunately, my tooth fell out and it's still not my big break. You know, management hasn't called. Oprah Winfrey hasn't called. Ellen DeGeneres, I mean, she got fired from her job, so I I don't know why I'm expecting a call from her, but um, what else do you want from me? Uh, My tooth falls out, and I give you the funniest damn damn episode on planet Earth. And you know what? Here I still am, waiting for my big break. Do I have to get hit by a car? Do I literally... Have to break my leg. Like, what else do you guys want? Arguably, I think my tooth falling out would be worse and probably was worse than breaking my leg. I've never broke my leg, but I can just imagine. Because, you know what? That heals. I'll never heal from what I saw that tooth was in. (laughs) Anyways, no, for real. Um, Thanks so much for the love on my last episode. I am so glad that it, you know, brought you guys some laughs. Um, You know... It, <laughs> they were talking about it on what we said, JC and Chelsea today, and I was listening to it and I was like reliving the trauma. And I was like, honestly, I'm getting triggered. I need to turn this off, but no, it was so funny. Um, I've been keeping a secret from you guys. I've been keeping a secret from the tyrants. No, I don't have a boyfriend. Hold your pitchforks. I'm still single. I'm still with you. Um, I shot a new cover. For tyrants. That actually might not be a secret because I think I had maybe said that I was going to be doing it. It's also not a secret because no one cares. Or really might want to know this. Because there's not a happy ending to this story. It's not, it's not really a story. And it's not like there should be a happy ending. Long story short, I shot it. I liked it. I thought I was going to use it. It wasn't exactly what I wanted to do. I had a different concept, but the different concept, you know, maybe required a little bit more work and a little bit more budget, if you know what I'm talking about. Um, Please sponsor me. Um, And so I ended up doing something that I still kind of wanted to do. It was still in the same realm and, you know, rented the studio, shot it, had Ash help me shoot it, ordered the wardrobe, spent all this money, this moolah, this dollars, And I spend probably two weeks editing it, going back and forth, changing this, changing that, changing that. And then I send the final draft to 
to a select group of individuals in which I send most of my content to to get approval and seek validation from. Um, that being Tezza, JC, and Billy. And all three of them had positive feedback, positive things to say. However, they all said that they liked my current one better. <laughs> and this is no dig at them because guess what? The reason I go to this specific select group of individuals, Billy, Tezza, and JC, Marie Smith, is because I know that those bitches might tell me what I don't want to hear, but they're going to tell me what I need to hear. They're going to tell me the truth, whether I like to hear it or not. 99.999% of the time, I don't want to hear it. I'm just seeking validation. However, I'm always on the wrong side of the vote. They're always, you know, probably right. But um, they all told me that, you know, it was cute. They liked it, but they liked my current cover better. So just so you're aware, there was supposed to be, you know, like relaunch, not like a full rebrand, just like new cover because Jay-Z can get on my ass all she wants. Every time I tell her I want to shoot a new cover, she's like, oh my gosh, but you just redid your other one. That was one year ago. That was 365 days ago. That was one year ago. Mama, mama, mama. I've changed this person. I've grown. I've lost teeth. Put them back in since then. I, like, I need to grow. I need to change. When the seasons change, my cover should change. You know what I'm talking about? Um... So I don't know. I wasn't loving the green. I wanted a new vibe. And just just to let you guys know, I, I, I'm not, I'm always thinking about giving you guys new fresh content, keeping the podcast fun and exciting. However, I got shut down by big corporate, by corporate tyrants. <laughs> JC, Tessa, and Billy, they turned me down in the board meeting. Um, so I might still post it for fun. <laughs> I might, you know, all of them were like, oh, just save it for like a launch. A launch of what? A launch of what? What are we doing over here on Tyrants? What are we doing over here on Tyrants? New episode and it's me like a full production photo shoot, like full makeup beat, House of God, paid someone to retouch it, paid the, the mama, mama. That's not what we do over here on Tyrants. The Tyrants pod Instagram channel ain't that sophisticated. However, I probably will now just post it because I paid for it and I look sickening. So if randomly in the sea of just dumb reels that no one cares about on the Tyrants pod Instagram channel, if there is a gorgeous photo shoot that looks like it should be a new cover and you guys would maybe think, oh my gosh, this should be the new cover. It was gonna be. It was gonna be. But but it's not going to be anymore. And, you know, to to Tessa's credit, I she was like, what did you want to do? Like, I'm confused because I was like, oh, this isn't what I even really wanted to do. And I sent her the concept of what I wanted to do to start with. And she was like, OK, well, this is it. Like, this is cool. Let's do this. I said, OK, cool. Let me hire a stylist, the editor in chief of Vogue, like Miranda Priestley. OK, Hong Kong, sir. You I hope you're OK down the stairs. Um, you know, I need a team. I need a production manager. I need a lighting assistant. I need so much more than I needed the first time. And also, I already did it the first time. I already paid for that. So now I got to go do it all again. So just know, just know, which I'm sure no one's thinking about this because no one cares about little old me. But if you're ever thinking, wow, you know, his brand's been kind of stagnant. He could use a new cover. He's been kind of the same for over a year. Um, I'm working on it. And there's going to be a new cover coming soon. And by coming soon, I mean within the six to eight month range <laughs> when I get the budget and the time and the presence and the patience to um, produce this photo shoot. But it's going to be good. It's going to be good. In the meantime, enjoy my new disco ball. Enjoy the YouTube videos and enjoy um, just my presence and love and laughter here on your Wednesday morning. In other news, JC Marie Smith and Ty motherfucking French are being scammed. We are being targeted. We are being cyberbullied. I I was down at her house the other day. And she made me aware of the fact that she was getting scam calls, but they were looking like they were coming from me. Like it said, Ty French is calling you. It said my phone number, had my profile photo, my contact card. And I was calling her. However... I was not calling her and it would, I, I can't even remember what the call would say, but you know, it would say things and vice versa. Like she, 
people in her contact list have been getting calls from her saying it's from her and she's not calling anyone. I never heard of this phenomenon happening ever in my entire life. Never did I think that someone could scam call someone using your phone number. Three days later, I get a call from JC today. I answer immediately and it's ringing. There's no hello. So I hang up and I call, I text her and I go, wait, that's so weird. Sorry, when I picked up, it just had a ringing noise. She says, what do you mean? I didn't just call you. Ma'am, ma'am, you didn't just gotta try to call me three times because in my call log, in my call history, if I call Verizon, he's gonna say, Jason Marie Smith called, called you three times. Straight to voicemail. I even got a voicemail from one, one of them, but it was just a ring back dial tone. I go, oh, okay. So I'm now being targeted. Literally then I get a random phone call from a random phone number seven times in a row. I do not answer any of them. Then 30 minutes goes by. JC receives two calls from me. And I'm in the shower. I'm in the shower, scrubbing up my body, rinsing my crack, getting ready for this here podcast. And I got out of the shower to a text message. Ding. Hey, did you just call? Ma'am. Ma'am. Who is targeting us? Do we need to call the FBI? Like, how... How are you calling JC using my phone number and it's showing up as my contact? But I ain't calling you, bitch. How is JC receiving a ring a ling ling phone call from me and I ain't sitting on the phone dialing? Who is in a call center, probably in Russia, using my damn name and likeness. And also, what do you want with me? What do you want with us? Because even if she answers, Jay's is gonna know if it's not me. I know I got a lot of different voices in my head and you know, on the podcast. She's gonna know the second that somebody answers that it's not me or if I ask for money or whatever. Chelsea, I could probably scam. <laughs> Chelsea, they should probably attack her. <laughs> if you know, you know. If you don't, go listen to what we said. Um, but same with me, I'm so sorry. If she asks me for money and or if someone answers and it's not her voice, I'm going to know. But also, I've never answered, so I guess I need to ask her this. Are they using AI? And are they going to now like use our voices to scam each other? Like, is she gonna answer the phone and it's gonna be like AI voice of me and vice versa? I ain't never gonna trust this bitch again. My best friend that I call every day for the last 15 years. I can't even trust that shit anymore. I can't even call her anymore without her thinking I'm a scam, I'm a troll, I'm a fraud. And I am two of those things. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, but what the heck? That's so scary. Is this happening to anyone else out there? Or like, do Jay-Z and I need to legitimately be concerned? Obviously, everyone receives like scam calls or, you know, like 1-800-dumb things or, you know, like whatever. Like people receive scam calls, scam likely. You see it on your iPhone. These aren't scam likely. These are, hey, Ty French is calling you. Ring, ring, ring. It ain't me. So is this happening now? Like, have the scammers finally progressed in their knowledge of the scam? And how are they doing it? Why are they doing it? And how do I get it to stop? Also, we live in one of the richest, most, like, advanced countries in the world. And... If scammers are out here getting my social security number. Scammers are out here hacking my bank account. Scammers are out here now calling my damn friends with my goddamn phone number. 
I, I just knew, I just knew everyone wanted to be me. I just knew that everyone was jealous of me. Everyone was so jealous of my success. People are so jealous of my termite city apartment. People are so jealous that my air conditioning doesn't work. People are so jealous of my life that they just want to be me, that they have to hack into my phone. They have to hack into my contacts. They have to hack into my bank account. They have to hack into... I know you want to be me, bitch, but leave me the fuck alone, okay? And that's the real tea. Thank you so much for spilling. <laughs> Anyways, um, I actually had a really fun weekend. It wasn't like, let me let me tell you guys, let me warn, let me let me let me ease your guys' worry. I wasn't a feral rat. I wasn't a feral rat. Now I did have fun. And I did drink, but I wasn't feral. And you guys, I've been a little feral lately. So um, I just thought you guys would like to know that. But um, Friday, I had a really cool shoot with Jose helped me like shoot it just here at my house and at the beach. And I'm actually really excited to post it. It's not for tyrants. It's for like an ad for my personal page, but it went really good. I'm really excited to post it. I don't know when that's going to go live. But just when you see something, you know, on my Instagram Support my paid partnerships so that I can pay for a lawyer to get this scammer off my ass. Um, but then um, my friend Nick Mackey and I went to this concert slash DJ set in Hollywood. The The DJ is called Hayden James. He sings that song that's like, you know, something about you. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm getting it so wrong and I'm not going to be able to do this. So I'm just going to play a little clip. For you, um, okay, Hayden James, bada bing, bada boom, gada ba, ga, 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 um, let me da 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 ba 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 ba, this song, you know this song, you know the song. There's something about you. There's something about you. Like, everyone knows that song, come on, like, let's not be dumb, everyone knows that song, if you don't know that song, like, 2014, come on, come on, we know it. Um, there was another one that, that I knew. <laughs> Like, come on, we all know that. Don't be dumb. Um, anyways, so we went to that on Friday in Hollywood. Now, I'm so sick of the homophobia. I'm so sick of being targeted for being a stylish gay ass bitch. Okay? Because uh, this ain't the first time that this has happened to me and you think I would learn my lesson, but I thought that we had progressed and I thought that I've lived in a really liberal city and I thought, you know, it's 2024 and I'm a homosexual living in Los Angeles. I can go to the club and I can wear what I want. Also, I'm not wearing janky ass shit. I just rolled out to that club with a white button up shirt with a tank top over it, cropped, cute. With St. Laurent denim shorts. Now, if you guys are familiar in the club scene, you might be rolling your eyes because you're thinking, Ty, come on, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? You know damn well they ain't going to let you in in denim shorts. But, you see, the bars that I like to go to, we're all inclusive, mama. And I'm not talking about all-inclusive drinks because guess what? Those drinks, they are exploitative. It's... Far from all inclusive, but I mean all inclusive. In I could roll up into that bar with a NASCAR racing stripe thong with nothing else and a pair of stripper heels, and they would not only let me in, they would probably let me skip the line. They'd probably let me skip the line, and they'd probably give me a free drink. I could go into those bars with a Victoria's Secret panty and a pair of wings, and they would let me in for free, and they give me free booze. Um, so pardon my ass, pardon my gay ass, that I'm wearing a button-up shirt and St. Laurent, no holes, not camo, nothing, St. Laurent, denim shorts. This club has the nerve, because there was a line, so I'm waiting in line. We had to Uber there. I don't, girl, 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 you're so confusing sometimes to be a girl, girl. I had Uber from my house to Nick Maggie's house. That's about in Friday traffic, one hour. One hour, mama. Then we pregame a little bit, whatever. Then we got an Uber, Nick Maggie's house to the club. 
about 10, 15 minutes. Then we go to wait in line, about another 30, 40 minutes. While I'm in line, they check my ID. They scan my ticket. Security gives me a stamp. They pat me down. Not until the man who did all of those things opens the rope to let me in after letting in four out of my six friends that I'm with. Does he say, oh, only thing is, um, yeah, we don't let shorts in. <laughs> Sir, BFFR, you check my ID, you scan my ticket, you patted me down, you... You're waiting till now? You could have told me that 30 goddamn minutes ago when I was in line. And you know what? I just got to say shout out to Nick Mackie. He doesn't listen to the podcast, that motherfucker. But um, shout out to Nick Mackie because he's a good ass friend. And he knows, you know, Tequila, she could be a lot of things. Um, but one thing she's guaranteed to be is a fucking cunt. And she... Does not like when straight establishments do not um, let her in because of what she's wearing, um, especially when she's wearing designer items. And, you know, there's been there's been instances in the past where I've, you know, been known to yell at a doorman. Um, and he he didn't even let me breathe. He didn't even let me pick up my phone. Nothing. He immediately goes, I ordered a car. We're going back to my house. I'll let you borrow a pair of pants. Like, just let's go. Our friends went in. Sweet, sweet angel. Miss Mackey took me back to his house. We quickly, you know, got some new pants on. I wore some gorgeous camo pants. And the perk of going back home was everybody at the bar had to go order a drink. We took a few more shots, and then we were on our way back to the club. And we got back. The guy let us skip the line. The DJ hadn't even started yet. And I don't know. At, like, you know, if you're going to have a dress code, I'm just going to need you to, like, we had to pay tickets to get this event. This wasn't just at a bar. We had to buy a ticket. If there's a dress code, could you please put it in the email when you send me a fucking ticket? Because if not, I'm going to assume that I can wear whatever the fuck I want. Because it's a free country, it's 2024, and I'm a successful homosexual living in Los Angeles. Um, I should be able to wear whatever I want. However, if you have a dress code, that's fine. And I appreciate that you own this establishment and that you want to curate a vibe and you want to curate an aesthetic. Even though all the whores in there are wearing the ugliest outfits I've ever seen. And, oh, we can objectify women. And literally, they can be in denim booty shorts up the crack. They can be in these little dresses that literally I see areola. However... Pardon me that I'm a man and I can't show my little knees. What the fuck is that? What the actual fuck is that? Because I understand if you say, you know, maybe no denim. There were girls in there in denim. No shorts. There were girls in there that I could basically see their pubic hair. There were girls in there where their titties were so in my face, it practically made me straight. So what is it? What is it? We don't care that women can just, you know, show it all, but I can't. And this isn't to women. This is to men because it's like, okay, that just proves that you're so disgusting. You're so disgusting. You want all these girls in there like showing all their skin, but I can't show my, my knees. I can't show my knees. I, 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 I'll never win this war. And I don't think any of the tyrants are fighting them on this war. But, like, this has happened to me probably 10 times. And every time I'm shocked by it. And I think that's why I don't learn my lesson. Because, like, every time I'm shocked. Like, that this is a thing and that this exists and that people think this way. Like, if uh, you cannot tell me that I, a man who is going in and I paid for a ticket. I'm going to go in. I'm going to spend $300 on liquor. And I'm probably going to be buying the girls drinks. That I can't wear shorts, but the girl can literally wear a bra and panty. Make it make sense to me. It doesn't make sense. It frustrates me so bad. But anyway, shout out to Nick Mackey. Um, thanks for being a good friend and taking me back to your house and letting me borrow your pants. Um, you know, I'm just out here one day at a time fighting homophobia. Fighting homophobia one day at a time. Misogyny. Sexism. Woo! Sorry, guys. 
I get so heated talking about that. I'm I'm sweaty. I'm hot. Want to talk about homophobia? Also, it's just hot here in LA. Even though, even though we are gathered here today to mourn the loss of something that we all love. We are gathered here today to mourn the loss of something that meant so much to each and every one of you. We are gathered here today to mourn the loss of summer 2024. (laughs) Summer 2024. You really were that bitch. You really were that fucking bitch. I swear to God, I loved you. Good times and bad times. I'll be by your side forevermore. That's what summer's for. The first day of fall is this Sunday. And, you know, we've been fighting it. We've been denying it. We've been putting it off. We've been neglecting it. But the time has come. It's time. It's time for pumpkin spice. It's time for fall. It's time for Halloween. This is Halloween. This is Halloween. It's time for sweaters. It's time for hoodies. It's time for a beanie. It's time for boots. It's time for fall. It's time for leaves. It's time for cookies. It's time for bread. It's time for... (laughs) It's fall, everyone. It's officially here. And in try, instead of trying to be a little pygmy little bitch. Oh, I miss summer. Where's summer going? I'm learning to go into this season with acceptance and love and embracing all that this season has to offer. One, because my air conditioning doesn't work that great anymore. So I'm excited for this heat wave to be gone. Hustle like a charge a motherfucker. Um, two, I am excited for my makeup to not melt off every time I try to do a photo shoot. Number three, I'm so excited for my leather seats and Reed's little Wrangler to be cold every time I hop on into that vehicle instead of scorching hot and firing up my pussy. Okay. So I'm really excited. I'm really embracing this new energy. Um, Billy just made me aware, and you know, plans change, so don't, don't kill me if this doesn't happen. But Billy just told me that, um, you guys know I've been doing Flagstaff for Christmas with her and her family, I think for the past six years. And I guess her family, they said, like we tried to, they made other plans. And so, and her girlfriend's gonna spend it with her family. So it's literally gonna be just Billy and I this year for Christmas. And I was like, wait, hold up. Wait a minute. We're having a beach. X my us. Ho, ho, ho. Hear them sleigh bells ring, lang, lang, jang, lang, lang. We're gonna be having a Venice Christmas. Just Billy and I. Oh, if you thought my apartment couldn't get any cuter. Oh my God, there's gonna be tinsel. There's gonna be lights. There's gonna be trees. There's gonna be elves hanging from the ceiling. It's gonna be a ball. I'm so excited. And, um, you know, I, I, I guarantee a lot of things. I really do. And I let you guys down with a lot of things I really do. But I can guarantee you that if Billy comes to my house for Christmas and I don't gotta travel with the podcast equipment, it's already set up, you guys will be getting another feral rat drunk. Christmas episode and it'll be a lot easier because we're already here in studio and yeah, I'm just so excited for that possibility. But anyways, um, I can't remember like how I got into that. Oh, because yeah, it's fall. Okay, fine. I accept. I accept it's fall. Okay. Summer. I'll miss you. I love you. Please come back so soon next year. Please, please. God damn. This summer was really fun. This summer was one for the books, as they say. This summer was one for the books. And just like that, the long days will just be memories. 
I don't know, whatever those fucking white women <laughs> write on Pinterest. Anyways, um, Saturday, Miss Josefina Cuervo and I had the cutest day. We went to a Stanley X Barbie event. Stanley and Barbie did like this new collab. Um, and we went and we got these cute new tumblers. Um, I got one for Barbie, one for Ken, I think. And then um, we actually had lunch at this place in WeHo called Bottega Louie. And then we just got like a quick little drink in WeHo. And honestly, it was so fun. I feel like Miss Josefina Cuervo and I rarely nowadays get time, like just her and I without, I mean, Drew, we love you, obviously. And we love all of our friends, but like we rarely get time like without anyone else and when we're not working, when we're not podcasting and we're not shooting. And it was just so fun to have a quick little lunch day with her. And then um, I got back home at maybe like 5 p.m. And I didn't do anything else on Saturday night because I'm a good little boy. Sorry, I feel like my weekend update <laughs> is going so long. But Sunday, I went to the Long Beach Flea Market with JC, Leaf, and Benny. And it was so good. That was my first time I've ever been. It was so overwhelming. I didn't know that it was that big. There was a lot of ground to cover. I didn't even leave with anything because I was so overwhelmed. I got a lot of ideas for things, like for Coachella and for my apartment and stuff. So now that I feel like I know what it is, next time, I love you, JC and Leif and Benny. But next time, I think I need to go alone because it's kind of a lot. Like, we went just because we wanted to hang out. And so that's why I didn't feel like I was really looking that much. But sorry, I can't be chatting about life and asking about how Benny is and also trying to secure a deal on this pillow over here. No, I could have. I'm kidding. But um, it really just was like a lot. And it's really crowded. I don't think it's like really a place that you go with friends to catch up. You know, you could bring a friend. But if you guys are both, you know, on the prize trying to hustle. Um, maybe next time we go, maybe we'll we'll leave Leif and Betty at home. I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> Leif, I just gave you the boot. Um, but um, then... My friend Brielle and her mom Kim were in town. Kim Zolziak from the Housewives of Atlanta and her daughter Brielle, who's one of my best friends. They were in town and we went to Craig's in WeHo for dinner. And that was so fun. I just love any time that they're in town and any time I get to see them and spend time with them. It was so fun. And it was the Emmys. So they were like kind of playing it online. I didn't even know it was the Emmys. And so I'm sorry if you guys wanted any <laughs> comments about the Emmys because I literally have none um, because I was drunk at Craig's. And funny enough, I, I mean, obviously Brielle and Kim are Bravo girlies. They're, you know, whatever. I never run into Bravo girlies, I feel like. And it's so weird because every time I'm with them, we run into other Bravo people. I don't know what it is, but we were sitting at our table at Craig's and in walks Teresa Judice, his husband and all of his sons. And they sat at the table right next to us and... Like, he came up, like, said hi to all of us, like, shook my hand. And, like, I, I probably, if you dig it up, I probably said some shocking things about that man on this podcast. And, like, I still stand by that. I will say, he was very, very nice. Obviously, it's not going to be rude to, like, Kim or me, you know. But um, he was very, very nice. Had, like, really good energy about him. I, I, I don't know. I met him for two seconds. I'm just saying. But, um... Yeah, so that was kind of crazy, but it was so fun to hang out with Kim and Brielle, and um, Brielle and I went for drinks afterwards at the Nice Guy, and since it was Emmy's night, like, everything was kind of dead. It also was a Sunday, but yeah, the next day we went to um, El Pastillo for lunch, and yeah, it was good. It was good to just hang out with her. Next time she's in town, she was in town for a really short period of time. Some of you guys had messaged me when I posted with her that I was with her. Um, and a lot of you guys wanted her to come back on the podcast, but, um, it was a really short trip. She's going to come back, I think in a few weeks and maybe I'll try and get her to come give us a life update here on Tyrants. But yeah. Oh my gosh. Over the weekend, we got a new song from my daddy, my superhero, the weekend, Abel. My sweet, sweet, sexy, sexy daddy. The weekend finally, finally gave us new music. However, not however. Okay, first off, let me start with the positive because I'm a positive person these days. It's amazing. It's so good. I can't wait to see you. Uh, uh, uh. You know, it's only about a week, bitch. I don't know all the words, okay? 
How does it go? Uh, Dancing in the flames. I'm tone deaf, and it's been a week. I don't know the words, okay? Leave me alone, tyrants. However, um, it's a great song. Um, The music video, was I blown away by? No. It was shot on an iPhone, which is cool, but like, compared to his music videos in the past, I mean, I guess it's like when you have literally one of the most watched videos on YouTube, like, how do you go anywhere from there? But... It just felt like it was filmed on an iPhone to me. Like, it wasn't giving anything crazy. It wasn't giving storytelling for me. But I feel like he probably just did that because I bet you they literally paid him a fat check. So it's like, sure, do my music video. You can make it look whatever you want. But my theory is, is that the song also was kind of a throwaway because he knew it was going to be tied to the Apple thing and being an Apple commercial or whatever. So he was like, you know what? I'll give you this one. And then the next one's going to be like my main single. Um, because the song, and I'm going to hold your hand when I say this, the song is kind of giving Taylor Swift. <laughs> and that ain't a hate to Taylor Swift. And that ain't a, I love The Weeknd. I love The Weeknd. I love you, Abel. And I'm not saying that as a dick to Taylor Swift at all, but, um, it's giving Produced by Jack Antonoff. It's giving synthy pop, which like he is a synthy pop kind of guy, but like it is giving me a little bit of like Midnight's era Taylor Swift. And that just, that just might be me. That just might be my observation. And, you know, maybe I just have to live with that. I don't know. I don't know. Is anyone else seeing that? Maybe the Swifties, the Tyrant Swifty community Venn diagram. I'm going to need you to rise up. And I'm gonna need you to listen to the song "Dancing in the Flames" by the weekend, and let me know is it kind of giving Ben Nice Era Taylor Swift? Um, Cause I haven't really listened to the whole album. I mean, I did once upon a time, but um, yeah, I wouldn't say it's my favorite weekend song. It's it's not giving gasoline. That's for damn sure. It's five a.m. my time again, and you see that I in pain. Gasoline by the weekend. Is the best song I've ever heard in my entire life. I'm sorry. I'll say I'm, I'll, I'll die on that hill. Um, the other good new music that happened over the weekend. I don't know if you guys are fans of FK Twigs. I like FK Twigs like from a distance. Like I'm not like into her lore. I don't know anything about her. I just know like obviously what she looks like. I know her dating history. Um, and I know she's like really cool. She kills it on red carpets and stuff. Like when she goes to Met Gala and stuff. But her new song, You Sexua, is so beautiful i'll play a little clip if i'm not gonna get copyrighted but it is literally okay i need to just go to the you like it's so so beautiful i can't play more than that because i'm gonna get copyrighted turn off phone um, but you guys should go listen to it. If you guys like, I, I have a wide range of music. You guys know that because back in the day, um, song of the week, which maybe I'll bring it back now that I'm not doing two episodes a week. Maybe I'll bring back song of the week. I don't know. I liked doing it. A lot of you guys liked it. It's just hard because I can't play the song. And I said, I was going to start posting it just on my Instagram stories and it was going to be like an Instagram story thing. And then I never did it, but maybe I'll start doing that. I don't know. Anyways. Um, sorry. I'm just brain farting. Um, every two seconds here, but it's so good. I know that's like not a lot of people's like music genre that they listen to. Like some of my friends would be like, um, are you okay? Like this music makes me feel like you're clinically depressed, but it's so good. And I love it. And maybe you guys will like it. So go check it out. Okay. I don't know if you guys saw this, but Instagram just announced that they are going to force millions of teens into protected accounts. So I just read an article on CNN this morning that said Instagram on Tuesday announced its most dramatic effort yet to protect young users from dangers on its platform, implementing new teen account settings that will automatically make millions of teen accounts private and restrict what kinds of content those users can view on the app. So I guess there was like a lawsuit a few years ago that basically addressed and brought attention to all of the risks that the platform poses for young users. Um, and there was like a lawsuit that basically said 
that CEO Mark Zuckerberg ignored warnings for years about harms to teens on its platforms. You know, obviously about like, you know, child predators and all that. I don't even want to get into like the details of it because it's just so gross and disgusting. But um, yeah, I guess Instagram will automatically apply the new team account settings to all users under the age of 18. After the update, 16 and 17 year old users will be able to manually change the app back to their preferred settings, but 13 to 15 year old users will be required to obtain parental approval for any such change. Um, and you know, it's just like, there's a lot of going to be like a lot of parent tools. There's going to be things as like take a break nudges, restrictions on age and appropriate content, blah, 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 blah. The fact that this, I thought this was already on there. What are you talking about? 13 year olds have been able to just get on the app and just freely peruse. There's been no regulation. There's been no monitoring like what type of content is being fed in their algorithm that's so scary obviously you know there's this like what's the word i'm looking for like dichotomy or like there's this like what's the word i'm looking for Ju juxtaposition i don't know i'm not a literary <laughs> professor okay there there's two sides in anything, in government, in schools, in tech, in whatever, where it's like, I live in a free country. You can't tell me what to do. If I want my kid to be able to have Instagram and do whatever the heck he wants, sure, let me do that. And then there also is the other side where you're like, no, like a kid should not be able to get on an access to the internet and literally be able to peruse whatever they want. Whether that be, you know, violence, uh, sexual, like anything. Like that, they shouldn't have access to the entire world in at such a young age. And the entire world should not have access to an individual of that age or of that vulnerability. And so, I don't know, I grapple with the fact of like how, how much do you want, like how much do you want the government to have a say on what you're doing? But then you also do want them to intervene with certain things. I don't know. I, I go back and forth on like, where is that perfect balance? And I think that's literally what politics is. And I think that's literally what like the party system is and stuff is like finding that balance. And you resonate, you resonate, you resonate with certain politicians who like also view you the similar, they express the balance that you want. If that makes any sense. I don't know. I feel like I'm like really going down a hole, but, um, so at first when I read this, I was like, wait, what? Whoa, like you can't just like turn off kids' accounts because I'm thinking about back to when I was a teenager, like I got on Instagram when I was 13. I was, no, wait, how old was I? 14? I was 14 when I got on Instagram. And now like I would have had to ask my parents to let me be on this app and like set all these settings up. And like, I don't know if they would have done that for me because they probably wouldn't have understood it. And like, I don't know. And... So I'm just meeting it with my own experience. But obviously back then, like there were no DMs. There was no, ex like there was nothing. There was no explore page. You couldn't search. Like there wasn't any, nothing. There, there was no predators getting into my DMs or in my comments or whatever. Like it was literally just a photo editing app sharing. You followed your friends, whatever, for so long. And by the time that it finally was that, I was mature enough to know better and to know the signs of what to watch out for and stuff. And I was educated. I kind of educated myself. We all kind of did. And I do wish that there was more education in online safety and scams and predators and all of these things. And it's a like, don't even get me started on schooling. And like, why? Like, sure, learn math, learn this, learn whatever. Why am I taking a cursive class? Teach me taxes and teach me how to be safe online. Like that literally needs to be a class. And sure, like we had computers class, when, and maybe it is, I don't know. I, it's been a while since I've been in school. You guys know I'm old. Maybe knock them doors down. <laughs> Anyways, um, like when I was in computer class, we were learning how to type. Like no one knew how to type like because computers were like a newer thing. Like we had to take typing classes. We had to learn like, you know, paint and like how to make a PowerPoint presentation and all of those things. But like we weren't learning about the risks of the internet and security and cybersecurity and predators and all these things. And so I, I, for a minute there, I was like, 
a little like, whoa, this does feel like a little bit like censorship. But as I've, you know, processed it all day, I'm like, of course we need this. I guess I just thought like it was already happening on the back end for them to have to come out and say like, okay, now we're going to do this. It's kind of crazy because that should just be a given. That should be a given that 13 year old shouldn't be able to sign up for this platform and have carte blanche to all of its tools and all of its access. Um, and I'm glad that, you know, I think a lot of people would say like it's on the parents, but I'm sorry. A lot of people don't have parents. A lot of people don't have parents, period. A lot of people don't have parents that give a goddamn shit about them that are aware or care about what's happening in their kid's life when their kid is 13, 14, 15. Like they're so checked out. They're busy with work and maybe they're not going to be doing it on purpose, you know? So I, I do think that this is really, really positive. I think I feel so blessed to be one of the first gen. I feel like I'm the first generation that grew up with iPhones in high school and with Instagram in high school. Like I got my first iPhone in eighth grade. <laughs> and so I probably got my first Instagram in eighth grade or ni in ninth grade probably. And, you know, it's obviously was way different. But I'm so glad that I loved being able to grow up with Instagram and with the creativity. And that made me like fall in love with photography and like got, that got me to where I am right now. But I'm so glad that I'm not in eighth grade right now growing up with the Instagram that Instagram is now. It's like I grew up with Instagram, but like I didn't grow up with Instagram as it is today. And so I, I do. I am glad that. You know, maybe them adding these restrictions will make it so the kids now that do get an iPhone and can't have an Instagram, it it kind of reverts it back to what Instagram was when I was in eighth grade. Like when I got Instagram and I loved it and it was so fun to see what your friends posted and what they were up to and whatever, that's going to be now what Instagram is for them. It's not going to be this like full capitalistic, scary, self-comparison, you know, maybe predatory environment. And I think that's amazing. And I think it's great. And I think that it's good that these big companies take some responsibility and add these restrictions and don't just leave it on parents and be like, well, if you if you buy your kid a phone and they can get Instagram, sorry. Like, it shouldn't be like that. And there should be restrictions. However, something we got to talk about Instagram that really pisses me the frick off. Frick? Frick. Pissing me the frick off. Tyrants, I knew watching that Secret Lives of Mormon Wives show would bring me back, but I didn't know it would bring me back to Frick. <laughs> when was the last time I said Frick? Oh my gosh. Like I said, I left the church 10 years ago, but the church will never leave me. The Mormon inside me will never leave. Because I'm sitting here in my the safety of my own home with not a person in sight. And I said, what the frick? That's that's not right. That's not right. Anyways, um how how I don't under I don't understand the it's either they know and they don't care, or they aren't as smart and it's not as successful as a platform as they make us think they are. But like I can't even post in a speedo. Without getting flagged for porn. I can barely post in a short short without getting flagged. I know girls who can't even post in their bikinis. That aren't even revealing. That don't even have big juicy titties. Meanwhile, porn bots are literally posting porn. And are literally in my DMs every 20 minutes. Oh, Hi. My friend told me to message you. You want to send me a message? C click the link here. Oh, you want to see my boobies? Send me a message. Oh, hi. I like your profile. I really wish we could chat some more. And it's big juicy titties. And a punani. Sometimes I'm scrolling on reels and I see something and I'm like, oh, hold up, wait a minute. I'm a grown ass adult and I feel violated. I wonder they haven't start up teen accounts because they're seeing porn scrolling on Instagram. Ah. 
how, how is that getting through the system? How is that getting through the algorithm? How is that getting through your checks? Because guess what? If I post an advertisement because I'm an influencer and I don't fucking hashtag ad, you'll delete that fucking post within 20 seconds. If I don't put a paid partnership label on there, guess what? Account reported, flagged for review, deleted, and guess what? Then I'm shadow banned for two months and my posts get one like. Only my mom is watching my Instagram stories. So how is it that Jessica is all up in my DMs, all up on my feed, all up in my algorithm, tagging me in photos, and she's getting dicked down in Dallas? Mark Zuckerberg, you've got... You got to give me some answers. And I just, I don't get it. Like we use AI for so many things. Like computers are so smart. There are all these algorithms that detect when people are, you know, promoting terrorism or, you know, racism or white supremacy and all of these things. So why aren't you filtering out the big titty bitches that are in my DMs and tagging me in porn photos every goddamn day? No wonder you had to make team accounts. I don't get it. I don't understand. And obviously, I think, like, you know, it's a great thought. We're going to have to see how well they execute it, Miss Instagram. Well, the entire rant today was supposed to be about the VMAs. However, one, they were a week ago. Ain't nobody care anymore. Two, I've been just yapping for the last hour. <laughs> I didn't know that we were already recording for so long. So um, I'm still going to get my thoughts, but I will try to go through it quickly. Um, So the VMAs were last week and, you know, nothing's just ever going to quite hit. Like the VMAs back in the day. When you had Gaga hanging from the ceiling, singing paparazzi with blood dripping down her chest in white leotard. When Britney Spears walks on the stage and she has a yellow snake wrapped around her waist. Christina Aguilera. No, wait, what's that been done? Madonna and Britney Spears are making out. Kanye West is getting on the stage and kicking off T-Swizzle. Like, we're not getting that iconicness. And I'm going to need the stars to wake up. Wake up and give me the tea. Give me, give me the drama. Give me the flair. Give me the camp. Give me something. And the only person that was doing that was Chaperone, and we'll get into that in a minute. But, um, you know, it just, it's not going to hit the same. It doesn't have that nostalgia. It was cute. I didn't know who half of those motherfuckers were. Like, I'm going to know, Grandpa. Somebody give me a cane in a wheelchair. It's might be proven. Maybe some erectile dysfunction medicine. <laughs> no, like, I just, I didn't know half the people were on the carpet. Um, I didn't care about half the performers. And, you know, it's just different. And you know what? You know what? Gen Z, reach out your hand. Here's the baton. Take it. Take it. Run, run, run as fast as you can. Can't catch me. The gingerbread man. Hustle, wake me, touch out. I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm done trying to keep up with what the cool kids are into. What the, if I like a new up and coming artist, sure, great. I'm going to listen like Miss Sabrina, Miss Chaperone. Thank you. Hi, hello. How are you? But I can't keep up with all these new little rats on the street and try and act like I care when I watch the VMAs. If it's not filled with Rihanna, Beyonce, Lady Gaga, I I just don't care. Performers, Sabrina Carpenter. Okay, cute, fine. Camila Cabello. (laughs) Shawn Mendes. However, Jose, Jose Cuervo is probably just stoked. He's just at home twiddling his little feet, kicking up his feet. So happy that Shawn Mendes is finally back at work. You know, you know, um, I just, I felt like it was a little lackluster. However, you know, there was cute moments. There were some cute moments. There were some cute fashions. Um, my best dressed was Lisa in Mugler. Now, Lisa and K-pop 
as a whole. Lisa came from Blackpink. Blackpink is K-pop. There are a few other K-pop girls there. That's just not my vibe. It's I just can't get into it. I just cannot get into it. And I'm not saying I'm not their demographic because they are literally one of the most famous people ever. Like, I think her performance was one of the most watched out of all of the performances. Hers was the worst. And she wasn't even trying to lip sync. She wasn't even trying to make you give into the illusion. But, but guess what? Her fans don't care. They love her. They love the, the K-pop fans are scary. They love her. And so I'm so scared to share my opinion. I'm so scared. I have nothing against her. Guess what? She was my best dressed of the evening. Looks stunning in Mugler. Stunning. She's so cute. Seems so sweet. I just literally gunned on my head. I'm in a kidnapped van. Name one Lisa song. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Tell my parents I love them. I'm done. I'm done. I'm a dead man. Gun to the head, bullet through the brain. I'm done. I could not tell you one Lisa song. I couldn't tell you one Blackpink song. I could not tell you one K-pop song. I don't know. And maybe it's because half the time they're singing in Korean, right? You guys know I don't do dubbed. I don't do other languages. And maybe I'm wrong for that. But also, am I? Why would I want to listen to something if I can't understand what they're saying? Like Bad Bunny. I love Bad Bunny. When you're singing in English. No habla inglés. No habla español. Hasta luego. If you're singing in Spanish, guess what? I'm so happy for you. I'm so happy for you. And I'm so happy for your audience and your demographic. I'm so happy that people are enjoying this and are finally getting like a mega superstar that, you know, is singing in Spanish and like Rosalia. I love it. I love it for you. I'm a singer. I'm a singer at heart. Not in real life, but in my heart and in my soul, I'm a singer. And you guys know I love to drive around and read the Wrangler and I like to sing along with the windows down, top off. You guys know I can barely pronounce English words. You think I'm listening to songs in Korean? <laughs> it's not happening. It's not happening. I'm sorry. So, you know, I'm happy for the girlies that are big fans. Um, I know nothing about her. Did she look amazing? Is she the one of the best dressed? Is her skin literally perfect? Yes. So I'm happy for her. Um, Chapel Roan's medieval look was the most, like, iconic VMA, you know, Lady Gaga in a meat dress moment that we got. Everyone else's was just like pretty. Chapel Roan showed up in this like medieval look. I think it was a, it was a uh, Y Project dress, I believe. She had this like vintage cape that was like truly medieval. It was like 600 years old. And the carpet that she had this like guy in this night costume layout. It was giving Tyrants, I won't lie. Um, this like vintage carpet that she rolled out that she walked on. And it was like 2,000 years old or something. That is the campiness that I need. Give me a movie star moment. And yes, a photographer yelled at her. And yes, she yelled back and she said, don't you fucking yell at me. Not with me, you little bitch. And she had these long nails. I don't even care if it's rude. I don't even care because guess what? The photographers are rude. I've been to an award show. You guys know I went... I went with Nessa Barrett. Um, those photographers on that carpet are so scary. If you struggle with anxiety or if you are overstimulated very easily and you don't like crowds and if it's your first one, even if you don't deal with that, if it's your first one, like it is terrifying. When I tell you you are on the carpet, there is 100 lights in front of you and 100 photographers and the lights are so bright that you can't see the photographers and they're all yelling because they want the shot of you looking straight into their lens. Chapel over here, chapel, 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 chapel. Look to the left, to the left, look to the left. Look to the left. Oh my God, let me get my face like ready. Let me put on my dress and then I will try and look at all the cameras I can. Why are you yelling at me? Like, calm down, we're all here. I want the photo, you want to take the photo. Great. If you miss it, guess what? You, you'll get the next one. Or I'll give you a little over the shoulder. Like, stop yelling at me. If you yell at me, it doesn't make me very comfortable. And how am I supposed to look hot when you're yelling at me? How am I supposed to be serving cunt when you're literally telling me to fuck myself, like it's not going to work. And I'm glad that Chapel Run stands up for herself. I know a lot of people are kind of over her shit and her complaining, but guess what? I will never, I will never push down a woman for standing up for herself and setting boundaries. And especially after reading Britney Spears's um, memoir, 
obviously, if you guys didn't read it, you can, can go listen to the Tyrants episode of me, um, you know, giving a rundown because <laughs> I spent way too damn long listening to that damn book online and then recording that episode. So please go listen to it. But um, after going through that experience and just seeing like Lindsay Lohan, Amanda Bynes, whatever, seeing what the paparazzi and the media and everything do to rising pop women, they don't want to see Chapel succeed. Chapel is literally set up to fail. And I'm so glad that she is setting boundaries for herself in this moment. And also, thank you for the drama. Like, I want drama at the VMAs. I want tea. I want you to roll out a red carpet. I want you to yell at the photographer. I want something. Thank you so much for giving me this. We're still talking about Taylor Swift and Kanye West. Obviously, I wish that never happened because, like, it's R.I.P. But, like, she's probably like, thanks. Thanks for that. Lady Gong in the meat dress. We still talk, I talk about that once a week with my friends. Like, thank you. Now, we'll, we're now this year, the VMAs, it's going to be the year that Chapel yelled at the photographer. And we've got the photo. It's going to be memed. Great. I love it. Um, anyways. Um, Halsey was in a red vintage 1996, shout out 1996 babies, hi, Gianna Versace gown that had only ever been worn once, I believe, and it hasn't been worn since 1996, and she wore it, she looked so gorgeous, she had this red wig as well, um, she performed as well, and it was really good, it was cute, she was like in this house, which I feel like kind of sucked for the people that were there, because probably no one could see her in the house, but like, it was cute, it was cute, I like it, her new music I'm liking, I always like her music. Like, there's always one or two songs that I like that, you know, is a song that goes to radio. But I wouldn't consider myself, like, a huge fan, you know? Um, Addison Wright. The girls. The girls, like, is the days that understand this look. Welcome. Welcome to my life. Welcome to my heart and my soul and to my friendship and to my kingdom. The girls the gays of the days that understand this look. You get it. You get it. If you don't get this look, I'm going to need you to open up. A bakery. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that. Um, just like, what do you mean you don't get it? What do you mean you don't get it? This is one of the most iconic looks that we've got from Addison Ray. And also, like, bring camp back to carpets. Bring camp back to the VMAs. This isn't the Oscars. This isn't the Venice Film Festival. You don't gotta be like politically correct. You don't gotta be appropriate. You don't gotta be Lady Gaga showed up in a meat dress. Lady Gaga, one year, I'm pretty sure, got carried in on a horse. She got carried in on a horse in an eggshell. Like, you can do whatever you want. And this was so chic. It was so cute. I can't remember the name of the designer, but it was giving kind of Valentino-ish, but it wasn't. I, I loved it. 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 Katy Perry. Katy Perry. Katy Perry. I know you feel it. Can you believe it? I'm gonna love you to the end and then repeat it. Katy Perry, I am on a roller coaster with your ass. We're up and we're down. I love you, I hate you. I love you, I hate you. We're up, we're down. I'm obsessed, I hate it. Like, I don't know. I don't know what to think. I don't know what to feel. I'm confused, I'm scared, I'm shocked. I'm excited. I, I don't know. I've never seen a woman look so beautiful. <laughs> like, you look... Fucking sick me. You look amazing. The body is there. I hate to objectify a woman and say, you know, your body looks amazing. But guess what? I also don't give a shit. I also don't give a shit. Because guess what? You're never going to hear me call, like, a woman fat. You're never going to hear me talk degrading down to a woman about her body. I'll degrade a woman in another. And if you're a fucking bitch, then I'll tell you you're a bitch. But I'm not going to, like, do it about your weight. But I think there's something to be said, and I know maybe this is toxic, and maybe I'm wrong. Please educate me. But like, when you can tell that someone like puts work into whatever it is, like their work, their fashion, their body, whatever, it's like you can tell Katy Perry obviously works out. Like she puts a lot of work into her body because she wants it to look good, and it's like I think acknowledging that isn't a bad thing. I don't think it should be the only thing that you acknowledge and it shouldn't be the only thing that you praise. Like, oh my, and it shouldn't be like necessarily like, oh my God, you look so skinny. But like, I think if you tell someone who you can clearly tell is trying hard and is dieting and putting the time in the gym or whatever, if you tell them that they look hot and they look great and that their body looks sickening, I think that's fine. 
right? If, if you know that they have like histories with like obviously EDs or anything like that, then, you know, maybe don't comment on their weight. But I don't know. I feel like you should, if I am working out at the gym and I'm, uh, 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 I'm squatting, I'm bicep curling for months and I go on a red carpet and my biceps are looking so sickening and I'm looking so stunning. And there's not one article. There's not one comment. There's not one podcaster out here in these streets talking about my body, talking about my abs, objectifying me. I'm going to be pissed. I'm going to be pissed. Objectify me. Objectify me, please. No one's doing it. No one loves me. I'm ugly. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, anyways, Katy Perry, obviously, she looked gorgeous. <laughs> Was she was receiving the video Vanguard Award? She also received VMA's most iconic performance when she performed Roar on the Brooklyn Bridge. And I just have to say, you're under arrest, MTV. I love you, but like that just proves that it's all fake, it's all made up. It doesn't matter. Like, literally, awards do not matter because you are telling me that the Katy Perry VMA performance on the Brooklyn Bridge, performing Roar. She's in like a wrestling outfit that I've never seen before. I'm one of Katy Perry's biggest fans. I've never seen it. Or I saw it and I forgot about it. Is the most iconic performance in VMA's history over Britney Spears with the snake wrapped around her. It is more iconic than Lady Gaga singing paparazzi with the blood coming down her white leotard suit as she's getting picked up from the sky. I'm your biggest fan. I'll follow you until you love me. Papa, Papa, Roxy. You know damn well that was wrong. You know damn well. <laughs> that was not the most iconic performance. And you were wrong for that. And that just kind of invalidated all the other awards in the night. You know, Chapel Roan won, I think, Best New Artist. Obviously, very deserving. Okay, well, let me get back to Katy Perry. Anyways, she did her big, like, performance. I had, oh my God, I have so many things I wanted to say. This way, this is going to be a whole hour, but now this episode's going to be a million years long. Um, okay, let me skip to the Katy Perry performance. So, um, Orlando Bloom looking sexy. Yay! Sexy, sexy daddy. Orlando Bloom um, came out to introduce her performance. She starts her performance. She's, like, floating in this circle. All I have to say is, ouch, my pussy. Like, that looks like it hurts. But, um, you know, once again, the body's looking tea. She looks great. She starts with Dark Horse. Then she goes to E.T. She's flying through the air. It's cool. She's running on the dancers. Um, she sings the new song with Dochi. The new song with Dochi. A lot of people are liking it. The music video, hot. The song, <laughs> I hate it. The song's giving kids pop. La da di, la da da, la da di. I hate it. 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 It's not my vibe. But also, I'm always wrong. I'm always on the wrong side of history, and um, I might love it in six months. So you never know. You know, don't worry, Katie. I might like it in six months. Um, I didn't. You know, I, once again. <sighs> There's, there's like moments like Chapel Row yelling at the photographer on the carpet that in turn becomes iconic in history for the VMAs. Then there are artists like Katy Perry trying so desperately to have an iconic VMA performance that she's scissoring Dochi on the stage and she's having the camera up her pussy. She's trying to have the Britney making out with Madonna moment. And like, it just didn't land to me. It just felt very forced. And I don't know, not my fave. Um, then she sings California Girls. Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? There's not a better song on this fucking planet. Better. California Girls. Oh my God. That song is going to be studied in history as one of the best song, pop songs. That is like a Michelangelo. It's like a Picasso. 
It's literally, I, I, there's, there's an, and, and then, and then she sings Teenage Dream. I mean, I mean, talk about nostalgia. Like literally one of the best songs ever. Um, her voice sounded actually really good. You could tell she was singing live. Then she sings I Kissed a Girl. She has these big balloon wings. Then she did Firework. Ah! That song is so good. That song is so good. You think it's cheesy. You want to fight it. You want to fight it. You don't want to like it because it's the cheesiest song on the planet. And it's like everything that we hate about capitalism. But it's literally the best thing ever. Do you ever feel like a plastic bag? I do. I do, bitch. Drift into the wind. Look at us start again. Do you ever feel, feel so buried deep? God damn, I do. <laughs> I fucking do. Oh my God, it's so good. I was like, like beaming in bed <laughs> while I was watching it. Um, then she did Lifetimes. Such a cute song, you know. I know you feel it. I know you believe it. Noticeably absent woman's world. Probably for the best, Miss Perry. Um, you know, then Orlando comes up. Katie gives him a big kiss. She accepts her award. I feel like this was probably the best thing to happen to Katie right now. I feel like people have really been not liking her. And this performance just reminded us about how much we love Katy Perry. And her husband is such an iconic actor. And we love her. And off of the backs of the whole Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds drama, like... Watching Katie in Orlando, I was like, wait, I kind of forget that you guys are married. You guys are literally two of the most famous people in Hollywood. Like Orlando Bloom, Pirates of the Caribbean, hello. They are one of the least thirsty Hollywood couples that I've literally ever seen. Like, better for act like J-Lo. Like, thirsty, Blake, Lively, Ryan Reynolds, thirsty, like... Just all these thirsty couples. Katy Perry and Orlando Bloom, you would think we'd be thirsty, but they are so not thirsty. They are so normal. They're so, like, they don't, like, exploit their child. They literally never, like, are really even on red carpets together. They very rarely, like, post anything personal about their life. And I think that that is a very good sign of a healthy relationship. And I think... I don't know. It just really makes me respect them a lot. They seemed really cute. He gave her a big kiss and he just seemed so proud of her. And I don't know. They just feel like they kind of like mind their business. But um, the one thing, I mean, she she did say that she was on the first day of her period, like the second that she got the microphone, which is like, you know what? Amazing. I'm a man. Don't know what a period feels like. I support women. And I love that. You just did that on your period. I love it. It makes it more impressive. However, like, not even that I felt like it was cringy or anything about that. It just, I can't put my finger on it because maybe like if Megan the Stallion did that, like it wouldn't feel weird. Like it just felt like she was trying too hard. Like she was trying, it felt pick me. Like it felt like, oh my God, I'm relatable. I have a period. Like, like, oh my God, I'm young. I have a period. Like, oh my God. I, I, it just felt like, I don't know. She was trying to have a moment and it just didn't land as much. I didn't think it was like, crazy or gross or weird I just feel like she, I could see what she was trying to go for and it just didn't land to me but um anyways I thought it was really good I I felt like maybe this was just me noticing it but I felt like people were booing her in the crowd when she was announced when she came on I don't know maybe that was just me I feel like we probably would have heard reports about that but I felt like I could hear it in the back but I know that cameras nowadays have like anti-booing technology so like ai takes out any booing on like a live stream so you would only know if people were booing if you were there but i feel like i heard a few unhappy people when they were there but i don't know but i think she killed it she deserved the video vanguard award she has so many iconic videos she has so many iconic songs it's like she was the perfect person for that award the most iconic performance you lost me there vmas megan the stallion Literally every single look she did was absolutely perfect. She was the host of the evening. She was the best host. Like I want her to literally host the Oscars. She was so funny. There were actually moments where I was laughing out loud when she came out and she had the Britney Spears yellow snake on and she was like, okay, okay, I'm done. Got the music. Take the snake. I don't know the snake. Like, please. She was so funny. <laughs> I was trying to hold it up for Britney. Okay. Like she's so funny. She's so, I 
Megan Thee Stallion is someone that like I love. I Every time I see her, I love her. She actually kills it in every red carpet. I love her looks. I just don't listen to rap that often. Like I don't really even listen to Doja Cat. I don't listen to Nicki Minaj. Like that's not my, you know, genre of music that I love. But every time I see her in something, I'm like, wow, I actually really love you. Like, I love you as a person. I think you're just so iconic. You seem so humble and so sweet. And I just, I love you. I feel like if I was in a room with her, I'd really get along with her. I don't listen to her music really that much ever. I obviously know the big ones that everyone knows, but I don't know her like lore, but I love her. I feel like if we were in a room together, we would really get along. And I really think she crushed the hosting spot, I think that was a really good thing for her coming off the backs of the whole like Nicki Minaj drama and everything. I don't know. I just feel like it really made me like love her a lot. Best collaboration went to Taylor Swift and Post Malone. If Taylor Swift's in the crowd, she's winning the award. Like, I'm sorry. Like, we already knew that that was going to happen. Uh, it, that's just facts. But, you know, congrats. Congrats. We love. Um, I did appreciate how... Because I think a lot of people thought like, oh, it's looking very reputation coded, her outfit. Okay, okay. I can't believe it's good. Taylor Swift has never looked better. The outfit, a lot of people didn't love. I kind of liked it. I actually really liked it. I thought it was cool. I thought it was kind of goth. I thought it was like Vivian Westwood -y. Her glam, her hair and makeup, whatever she did before she stepped her pussy on that carpet. I'm going to need to be replicated, duplicated every goddamn day of the rest of her career because she's never looked better. Like, well, why have you been hiding that look for 20 years? She looked so beautiful. So hot. Taylor, you won points in my book there. Um... Anyways, so a lot of people thought her look was like referencing, you know, reputation, which is supposed to be coming soon. But... I think, you know, I've seen rumors on the street. Apparently, the VMAs were supposed to be on 9-10, September 10th, not 9-11. And then the debate, the presidential debate was on 9-11 or on 9-10. And so then they had to move to 9-11. And so whether she was going to announce that or not, I don't know. But I did appreciate that she, she's she been known to announce something at an award show here or there. I'm glad she respected the sanctity of 9-11 and especially with 9-11 being in New York um, that just wasn't the time or the moment to announce an album to announce Taylor's version reputation um, I really appreciate it that was kind of one of the only times it was acknowledged that it was 9-11 I would have thought that Megan Thee Stallion being the host would have kind of opened the show with that which I guess is a little somber but you, it's one of those things that uh, sorry every 9-11 for the next ever like we're gonna have to acknowledge that as a nation as a country especially when you are in new york like it is just a very powerful day i've been in new york on 9 11 multiple times and until you're there like i don't remember 9 11 happening when i was a kid i would have been um six six years old so maybe i was in kindergarten maybe i was at home i don't even know i literally do not remember. So I don't have like a personal connection with it, but like I've been in New York multiple times during 9-11 and like there is this just energy. I'm a big believer in energy and, you know, being able to read people's energy that you're around. And when you're in a city full of millions of people that are all feeling this energy and that is like all the site of this like catastrophic, catastrophic event, like you just feel a certain way and you can't quite pinpoint it. It just is in the air. And I'm glad that she acknowledged it and then she respected that and she respected that moment. You know, Sean Mendez performed, Jose. I'm so glad you must be so happy that he's working again. Um, the fact that Sabrina Carpenter is having the biggest moment of her career right now and her album is allegedly about <laughs> Sean Mendez and Camila Cabello. And Camila Cabello was also there and Sean Mendez was there. And they all three performed. Sabrina Claudio's on stage singing Taste. And it's about Sean Mendes running back to Camila. And they're just sitting there watching her sing. Why is that crazy to me? Like, that's crazy. Also, Camila Cabello, what color is your hair right now? It was blonde. Then I saw you on the carpet. It was brown. And I th said, thank you, Jesus. I'm so glad that it's finally brown again. And then he came to perform. And it was blonde. And then I saw you on a photo the other day. On Instagram, it is blonde. What color is your hair right now? And I really hope it's brown because the blonde ain't it, mama.
Hang up the blonde. Put the bleaching tone away. Please. Please. Go back to brown. You look so gorgeous on the carpet. Her look was so amazing. I don't know who it was. I think it was maybe Versace. I don't know. She looked amazing. Shawn Mendes. Um, I, once again, gun to my head. Name one Shawn Mendes song. I'm done. I'm a goner. Can't can't name him. And um, I I would actually probably rather be gone than listen to a Shawn Mendes song. Like, I don't know. It's not my vibe. I'm sorry. Um, you'll never be John Mayer. Anyways, <laughs> Sabrina Carpenter's performance was really cute. I loved it. She she sang, you know, Taze. She did, I think she did like Espresso. She, she did a compilation of a few songs. Um, she looked so gorgeous coming down from the sky. She's in this beaded little number. She looked gorgeous on the carpet as well. She was in this like, vintage Bob Mackie number that I think Madonna wore to the Oscars and hasn't been worn since. Iconic, iconic. I love, I love, I love. I do think that she does this thing a lot with her hair and her makeup where she tries to look very, like, she likes to pay ode to a certain time period, you know? She loves, like, being, like, very 50s inspired and 80s kind of. It's definitely aging her a little bit. Like, she's young and, like, so gorgeous. But I feel like even the hair and makeup on the red carpet, I was like, okay, like, you look 30. So, which maybe she is 30. I actually don't know how old she is. Um, anyways, but it was cute. I loved the, all the astronauts. I loved the alien kiss, the transgender alien that got her surgery. <laughs> if you know, you know, I'm not explaining that one. Um, anyways, no, she did great. I loved it. I loved it. I, I'm so curious if her and, um, Barry Keoghan are still together because, um, someone asked Barry Keoghan in an interview the other day, like, oh, if you weren't an actor, what job would you like to be? And he was like, an astronaut. That would be fun. Obviously, in reference to <laughs> Sabrina Carpenter's backup dancers who were all astronauts, and it looked like she was giving him a blowjob and she was making out with the astronauts. So um, they're definitely still having a cheeky moment in the press. I don't know if they're still dating. Apparently, they're off and on again. I don't know, but that's the tea that I want from the VMAs. I want this. I want the drama, the relationships. Okay, um, and then my good girl, Benson Boone, who, you know, sang Beautiful Things, who, if we remember, was that last episode that I told that? The person who wrote and produced the Tyrant's intro song also wrote Beautiful Things, and now it's being performed at the VMAs. Iconic. Um, Benson Boone literally killed it. I met him the other day at a party and he was just so nice. Did I say that already? I don't know if I told you guys that already, but we met at a party the other day, um, because my friends had like a single release and it was so, he's so nice, so humble and so hot. And his performance was so amazing. I loved his like sparkly blue outfit. I would wear that in two seconds. His voice is literally iconic. It's so good live. He did like usual flips and stuff that he does. You guys have never like seen a video performance of his. Um, he does that at all of his concerts, all of his tours. He's like always flipping and stuff. I think he like did gymnastics in high school or something or college. I don't know. Um, but he is truly a star. He is an icon. He's a legend. Like he is literally the next Harry Styles, the next Justin Bieber. And, like he is so, so talented. So nice. He has so much charisma, so much style, such a unique voice. Like, he, he is it. Like, he is literally going to be a superstar, and I'm honored that I've ever even met him. Lenny Kravitz performed. Lenny Kravitz is one of those people that, like, I just want to be. Like, I just want to be you. I want to be you when I'm older. I want to dress like you. I wanted to wear that outfit to Coachella. Like, but who the hell are you? I'm sure if you, like, played me Lenny Kravitz songs, like, I would know. But, like, how does everyone just know who Lenny Kravitz is? He's one of those people where I'm just like, I guess I know you. Like, I guess you're just famous. Like, there are celebrities where I'm like, how do I know you? Who are you? <laughs> what do you sing? What movie are you in? But, like, I guess you're just famous in your mom. I don't know. Obviously, his daughter, you know, is famous now. And, I don't know, he's got, like, a lot of lore to him. But I need to get into that lore. And I also need to get into his closet because... That outfit is exactly what I need to wear to Coachella next year. Co Camila Cabello's performance. Cute. Cute. Are you just going to stand in that little thing the whole time and spin around? You're not going to engage with the audience? Not going to engage with the camera? Okay. Okay. Good to know. Um, good to know. 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 Um, <laughs> Chavo Ron's performance. It was giving time. 
sense. It was literally giving tyrants. Medieval, army, castle, battle. The voice was so stunning. It was so gorgeous. She is just such an icon. She's such a legend. Like, my my best moments out of the night, like, my best performers were Benson Boone and Chapel Row. Like, those two are going to be the music industry for the next six years. Like, so, so talented. So talented. So amazing. Like, Sabrina's was cute, amazing, whatever. But, like, Chapel Row and Benson's was just, like, such a new, fresh perspective. I don't know. I loved them. LL Cool J performed as well. And like, guess what? I'm a little young. I know, I know I might look old, but I'm a little young to know who that is. Um, I know, like, obviously I've always heard, like, I know what, I know the name LL Cool J, but I never heard of him. But he actually performed this song that is new off of his new album that I actually really love. It is called... But ba bam bam ba bing bong 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 It's called, it's called, I'm pulling it up, I'm pulling it up. It is called Proclivities, and it's with Sweetie. Like, oh, oh, okay. Okay, okay, I need to get to her part, because it's like, oh. Proclivities by LL Cool J and Sweetie, guess what? A vibe, a vibe. Windows down, PCH, amazing. I'm loving it, the vibes are amazing. Um, so yeah, I actually really liked his performance. Video of the year goes to Taylor Swift and Post Malone. Obviously, you know, none of the art none of the other artists were there. So like they make it just predictable. It's like I knew she was gonna get it. Did I think it was deserved? I don't know. I can't remember the other people in the category. I think Ariana could have got it just as easy. Like I thought I liked the video. I thought it was good. Um she changed her outfit, which like makes me think if you change your outfit, you know you're getting the award because if not, you would have walked the red carpet and you'd be sitting in your chair the whole time. So, like, why are you changing your outfit? You didn't perform or anything. So, if you change your outfit, like, that just made me think that you knew you were going to be getting on stage again. And you're so, like, clue-driven with your outfits and everything that you do on stage. So, I'm sure the outfit was a clue to a new album or something coming up soon. But that just, to me, told me that, like, she knew she was getting that award before she went. Which is fine. It's fine. You know, it's show business. But she kept... um. She kept her now, to me, I haven't seen like TikToks about this because you guys know I'm not like a huge Swifty, but I kept feeling like she was pronouncing her S's to sound like a snake. Like she kept saying that she, she was just very super excited. Like that's what it felt like to me. Maybe I, am I now a crazy Swifty? I don't know. It was cute that she brought up Travis and she thanked him. It was cute. Um, I love that she told everyone to register to vote which was good that she used her platform. And then she, um, she it was after that, or that, the night before she had told everyone to vote um, and she like endorsed Kamala um, on Instagram the night before. But anyways, I feel like I've, okay. I feel like I've been having some very negative reviews on the podcast um, because I've been becoming political. I mean, as I say that, as I'm literally wearing a Harris Walls <laughs> hat that I just got, um, make sure you're registered to vote. But um I didn't even know if I was going to bring this up. I don't feel like I've been very political. Like I've said like a few things a few times. There was one sarcastic joke that I made during a totally random episode with Jose that I apologize for. I was, we were drinking and I was like in the heat of the moment. And I was just like, I, it was, a, I was being just crazy. You know, like I was just like, if, if you're voting for Donald Trump, like, you're no longer a tyrant. I revoke your tyrant card. And like, obviously that's not true. Like I have multiple friends, like very close friends of mine that are voting for Trump. A lot of my family votes for Trump. Like I, it, that's not true. I don't think you're a bad person if you're voting for Trump. I don't hate you if you're voting for Trump. Obviously, if there are tyrants that are voting for Trump, like I, I it, we live in a free country. You're allowed to do whatever you want. Like I'm voting for Kamala. You guys know the reasons why I'm voting for Kamala. I might not understand reasons why other people are voting for Trump. And at times I try to just, you know, I don't know, make jokes or I get crazy. You know, I'm always like fucking liberals or this, that. And then like, I feel like I sometimes poke fun at both the sides. Um, but there were a few people who DM'd me or wrote one star reviews and left me nasty reviews because I said that comment. So I, I've kind of been losing sleep over that. I feel bad about that. I thought that, I, because guess what? I edit the podcast. Like, I could have taken it out. 
I didn't because I thought that in that moment you could tell that like obviously I'm being sarcastic and I like to, you know, push. I like to kind of poke as far as I can. Um, and sometimes I obviously take it a little too far. So I apologize if anyone was offended by that because I love everyone. We can have different views. We live in a free country. I obviously, you can see the hat if you're watching YouTube. I'm voting for Kamala Harris in Tim Walls. But um, yeah, anyways, I just wanted to say that. But I love you guys so, so much. Thank you for listening. If you are watching on YouTube, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. It helps me so much. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, please leave me a rating and review. If you leave a review, please make sure you're doing a five star. If you're going to leave a one star, please don't do it. I'm sorry about the Trump comment. And also, one of you tyrants, maybe this is you. I think her name was Faith. She left a comment and she left the most beautiful, raving review, like literally three paragraphs. And it was like, I love this podcast so much, blah, blah, blah. And I think she accidentally rated it run review <laughs> or one star. It's a one star review. And then it's three paragraphs that, about how much she loves the podcast and it makes her day every week. So if that's you, please go change it to a five star <laughs> because it actually really does help. Anyways, I'm getting carried away. I love you guys so, so much. I hope you guys have an amazing week and I will see you guys next Wednesday. Bye. Bye.